Greetings. This is day 91 of the Ukrainian resistance. This is Media Center Ukraine. And we have here today Ms. Natalia Homenyuk, Chief of the Joint Coordination Press Office of the South of Ukraine Security and Defense Forces. Natalia, hello. I would like to start with the following question. What is the current situation in the south of the country? Situation on the southern front line, especially along the line of contact, is quite tense. The enemy has been maintaining its positions for a long time. They are also digging in and reinforcing some additional positions. It's a testament to the fact that they are doing everything possible to stay in Kherson region for a long time. Recently, for example, last day, they started using recon groups, including groups that are dressed up in our military uniform, but each and every attack of theirs was deflected. The enemy sustained losses and they retreated to their prior positions. Natalia, I've read an update from your press center that you are detecting the war crimes committed by the Russians against Ukrainian civilians. How many are they? In what happens to the identified war crimes? Uh, how do you transfer this information to the law enforcement bodies? Uh, which law enforcement bodies uh, do you inform? Whenever we identify any war crimes on the front line, we document everything in detail and we transfer this information to the competent law enforcement bodies. Uh, the atrocities of the enemy are staggering and heinous. They are unfathomable and um, even inconceivable for our hardened military, but um, each and every fact is uh, thoroughly documented and transferred to the competent bodies. Uh, can you expand on the current situation in Transnistria? Because to the best of our understanding, it's uh, an area that can be a potential source of uncertainty or instability for Ukraine. So what is the current state of play um, in Transnistria, especially along the border with Ukraine? You are right. For a long time, Transnistria has been actively discussed. The enemy forces, uh, especially some propagandist forces, uh, circulated messages about the exacerbation of the situation there word had it that the Russian Federation could potentially use some of their forces deployed there to mount additional attacks on Ukraine. Uh, but uh, we tracked down this situation and we could see that it was just an old uh, playbook by the Russian Federation, like uh, setting a military draft office to fire um, and uh, provoked blasts and explosions on the other side of the border. But on our part, the state border is secured and reinforced. The defense forces are patrolling the problematic section of the border. As for Transnistria itself, they got caught up in this play which led to a decrease in the level of uh, readiness. So they declared a red level of readiness first, but now they reduced it down to a yellow one. Please elucidate the situation in Odessa, because the city of Odessa is defending our sea and our sky. Um, how likely is the scenario of uh, a ground offensive or amphibious landing, landing operation because it was definitely in the plans of the enemy at the outset of the war. The city of Odessa is still on the priority list uh, for the enemy. Um, this is a, a much coveted uh, city and region for them, but uh, the Odessa locals are determined 
determined to do whatever it takes to maintain a staunch resistance. Uh, the enemy is uh, reinforcing its positions. Uh, they are regrouping their warships. Uh, they're trying to dig in and reinforce their positions on Snake Island. Uh, they are also deploying some additional air divisions in the Crimea. Uh, the enemy is well aware of the fact that we are also capable of hitting their naval vessels and warships. So they are doing everything within their capacity to protect themselves. But we still have um, missile carrying warships uh, in the Black Sea, and they pose a threat not only to the south of Ukraine, but uh, to our entire country. We have already documented uh, several missiles launched from the sea, and those missiles uh, targeted different regions of our country. As for the ground offensive, we can see that the enemy stalled in Kherson and Mykolaiv regions. The southern armed forces of Ukraine are holding back the enemy and repelling its attacks to the best of their capacity. So for the current time, uh, the enemy cannot really progress and advance. Uh, the ground offensive scenario is under our control. As for the potential sea offensive scenario, we are tracking the situation down. As for the air scenario, unfortunately, we just expect uh, additional weapons and armament that will help us uh, provide better defenses uh, for the air. The air defense system in Odessa has been very effective. Um, it has been disrupting and shattering the enemy plans, and uh, hopefully we will be able to fend off uh, all potential offensives and attacks. And my last question is as follows. We are into the third month of the war. What is your take on some of the changes that uh, have unraveled in the armed forces of Ukraine? The main change is that uh, our army is confidently inching towards our victory. This is the only alternative for us. We don't really have any other options, any other ways out. We um, rely on the support from our international partners, but uh, we are not giving in ourselves. We are utilizing the already received military uh, equipment and weapons to good effect. Uh, um, hopefully, this is something that the enemy can already feel tangibly and viscerally. This is something that we will definitely share and we will disclose more information in our next uh, briefings and press conferences. Uh, and the weapons that uh, we are awaiting will just reinforce uh, our capacities and capabilities. And this is something that we will translate into our victory. Thank you very much for the update. Uh, I wish you more victories. We had Ms. Natalia Homonyuk with us, Chief of the Joint Coordination Press Office of the South of Ukraine Security and Defense Forces. Our next briefing will start in about 20 minutes at 1.30 p.m. and we will have Mr. Dmitro Solomchuk, member of the Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine and member of the Parliamentary Committee on Agrarian and Land Policy. We will be talking about food security, about the sowing campaign, as well as about the threat of hunger globally.